What's going on YouTube? It's your boy OGT Man, and today we got the boy Mike. He gonna be helping me react to certain videos. Um, I already was done with mine. Yeah, that is done. But um, yeah, today we got the curious case of Lil Yachty. I'm I'm curious just as anybody else on what the fuck the case is, anyways. But um, make sure to subscribe to I'm Yo. Whatever. You know how the fuck you say that? I'm Yo. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 getting that, no that. views. <laughs> well, he got 24K views on this. So, anyway, uh, let's see. Anyways, new to the channel, make sure you like, come subscribe. Like this being said, let's get started. Generation reason for despising the new age of hip hop. Yeah, you are the poster child. Exactly. For whack rappers. If they want to say somebody Whoa. like they say you. Whoa. To styling, writing, and later becoming Drake's best friend. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Lil Yachty has forever cemented his name in the rap game as an innovator. But it always wasn't like this. Miles Park McCollum, or better known as Lil Yachty. He was best known for his playful, youthful, and carefree image earlier on in the rap game. This playful and unconventional approach earned him both fans and critics, contributing to his rapid rise in popularity. Lil Yachty's music during this period often featured upbeat, catchy melodies and heavy use of autotune. His lyrics frequently touched on fun, nostalgia, and positive themes, resonating with a younger audience. But this didn't come without his fair share of criticism. Know whether you're in a 360 or not, I want you to appreciate the culture that changed your life. If you over 30, if you over 30, you may have heard the name, but never the music. If you, yeah, you are the poster child. Exactly. For whack rappers. If they want to say somebody. Chill. Yeah, hold up. Coming into the rap game, artists like Lil Yagi, Louis Vert, Famous Dex, many more had a unique sound in the current rap game. With SoundCloud and mumble rap on the horizon, the previous generation would often frown upon these up and covers, bringing up how their lyricism is non existent. All these young men, all these young men, stop being so bitch made, man. You, I want you to. What do you mean by that? I, I thought, he said, stop being so bitch made. What they do? That, that's what I want to know. I get the I get the dresses and shit and how mm -hmm. you, know, you know Lil Uzi was wearing dresses and um if Uzi wore a dress how many I gotta wear a dress bro I'm an Uzi fan you got to we'll search it up you'll see it and he was wearing a dress at one point but um yeah I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't say that he's a whack rapper I just say he not everybody likes his style but everybody when um when he made that song with whoever um called broccoli that that shit hit I ain't gonna lie. Well, yeah. From me. That's good. Get your bars up. Be mad. I don't care. I'm not here to be your friend. Ebro in the Morning is a popular morning radio show on 97, which was notorious for interviewing rising artists on their platform. And would be known for almost getting to the point of disrespecting the guests that he had on air. I'm good. Y'all get to y'all get to like 27, 28. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And y'all niggas get to struggling, and y'all come, y'all be trying to come back tell to you find what, that sound. I ain't gonna struggle, bro. All right, we're gonna see. I we gonna even, see. Oh, you gonna, gonna learn. learn. And, and guess what? I'm gonna be here. Yeah. <laughs> the moment Lil Yai was brought on as a guest, it seemed more like an interrogation than an interview. So how much money you got to make? How much you charge a verse? Like, 3500 3, a verse. <laughs> you got the bad people. <laughs> no, we're not. We're good Why people. are you judging? Because you, we've been with you for like three minutes. I can tell. No, Ebro and his co-host since the beginning of the interview were already gunning at him. And that was before he started the freestyle. You can't, you can't right, put right, the pressure right, right. like okay, that. Okay, my fault. Go. Okay. Nigga from the west side of town. Got a <laughs> young nigga from the west side of town. Red hair, gold teeth, but a nigga not a clown. <laughs> People who love bars and yeah. like are so about this hip hop are gonna hate so this. mad, right? And the reason they so mad is because they think that the young kids don't take this hip hop thing serious. I honestly don't. <laughs> he honestly doesn't. And although this is bad, this is nothing compared to his interview with Joe Budden on Everyday Struggle. What you don't you sound like say? you very aware what with what's this? going on, and you one of the hottest niggas on earth. Well, what do you want me to say? You want me to say? I want I, you to I, be I, aware I, of your business. I want you to know whether you're in a 360 or not. I want you to appreciate the culture that changed your life I, and took you from college dorm rooms eating fucking oodles and noodles. I want you, who's well spoken and articulates himself well. My nigga. What you're seeing is single-handedly the divide with the new generation beliefs against the older generation. Two different ideologies clashing. On one hand, we have Joe Budden, 
From a background of having a fond appreciation of the older style of hip-hop, and then the other hand, we have Lee Ayi, a bubbly, witty, very spirited artist who just wants to have fun. And at the time for Joe, that kind of answer wasn't enough for him. It's different now. The, the, yes. the way shit is now is just not the same, bro. I know. Know why it's different? Because we fucking made it different. Y'all carry it. That's why I have to be invested. Anybody who's passionate about hip-hop has to be invested in them. I was you last decade. I was this in Wu-Tang. Go to Google me. Go Google you word him. You know, although this came with its fair share of criticism. What did you say? He does who tan look where he at now. That's what you get, you bald head bitch. You, <laughs> you bald head bitch. This is this is why you out here trying to trying to speak to the old the, the newer generation about not fucking up. Cause you diss one of the biggest <laughs> people and look at you now. Wu Tang, bro. Those are some real killers, man. Oh God. And now look at you fucking struggling. Struggling on these damn whole shows don't make no sense. Agreed with you. Hip hop doesn't have to be a serious but providing the most lyrical composition ever. Sometimes it could just be about okay, catching so vibe, which brings me to his discography. Lil Yachty's entry into the music scene was by his debut mixtape, Lil Bo, released in March of 2016. This project introduced the world of Lil Yachty's distinctive sound, characterized by his playful melodies, heavy use of autotune, and a blend of trap and pop music. Lil Bo featured breakout tracks like One Night in Minnesota, which quickly went viral and established Yachty as a fresh and innovative voice in hip hop. The mixtape's success was driven by its infectious hooks and Yachty's unique persona which resonated with the younger audience. Following the success of Lil Boat, Yai released Summer Songs 2 in July of 2016. This mixtape continued to build on his signature style, offering a collection of upbeat summer eight tracks with songs like For Hot 97. I'm glad they did all this. I'm Following this, he featured on some of his biggest hits to date on I Spy by Kyle. I spy, I spy with my little life. And broccoli by Drum. Yep. It seems like Lil Yai was on an upward trajectory with no signs of slowing down. That all came to a halt with his debut album, Teenage Motions. In May of 2017, mm. Lil Yai dropped his sophomore project with critics responding negatively. If we're going to care about a Yachty mixtape, a Yachty album, a Yachty anything two years from now, the, the quality has got to improve on all fronts because there's only a, a certain amount of time in well, which Yachty's up. hype will sort of be able to uh, When Lil Yachty was asked about this in his interview for Interview Magazine, he said, when I first released my Teenage Emotions album, I thought it was fire. Then the sales came back and I did 44K the first week. I was devastated and so confused. I worked so hard with critics thinking he peaked musically. That next year, he dropped his continuation of the freshman series, Lil Boat 2. Released in March of 2018, marking a return to the sound that initially brought Yai to fame. This sequel to his debut mixtape featured collaborations with prominent artists such as Quavo, Offset, and Lil Baby. Tracks like NBA Youngboat and Boom emphasize Yai's ability to blend his playful style with harder hitting beats and lyrical content. And although it was received better than his last album, critics felt the album was overinflated from the amount of features as well as tracks on the project. Later that year, Still dropping a mixtape with fewer tracks played. called Nothing to Prove, showcasing the most versatility up until this point. With highs on the album such as Yacht Club featuring Juice World and Who Wants Smoke with Offset and Cardi B. But in my opinion, the most pivotal point in his career would be his final recall to his freshman sound with the final album of the Lil Boat continuity titled Lil Boat 3. <laughs> Guess we got Total, don't wait for me. Your time is up. Better save it. Please, I just ran up me at 80 p. With songs like TD, Hard and Me featuring Future, and Coffin. Approaching this tape, we're calling back to some of his happy melodies like Love Jones and harder hidden tracks such as Split or Demon Time. But after this project, it looked like he went in a bit of a different direction. You know, folks always ask me, be like, what's your thing with the you know, Detroit dogs? You know, why, why are you doing all this? I, I found a, a love. Michigan, you know what I'm saying? The city itself is just I vibe as I match. You know, and I established this relationship, this family with all these guys. Uh, all throughout Michigan, I was just Detroit. Try and put them on a, on a pedestal, give them a platform that they may have not had before. You know, it's nothing but love. And I just want to see these guys win. They're so talented. I feel like it's unfair 
in the rest of the world, you know, don't, don't know or hasn't seen it because it got to be seen. was always known for supporting up-and-coming artists. At the time of his Michigan Bow album, that wasn't any different. All my life, these niggas hated, they really some birds. So when my brother got them birds, we... This tape was very left field from what Lil Yachty has done in the past. While the mixtape received mixed reviews, it showed that he was unafraid to take a risk and experiment, which isn't common in today's escape music. He collaborated with many artists that year leaning into a new style of music. But in October of 2022, he dropped the single Poland, which turned heads due to his distinct, almost wobbly vocal style. This unique vocal style paired with the Lyrical Lemonade video skyrocketed with virality, as well as two other singles leading up to his next project. Let's start here. The album sound was like a departure from Yai's signature style, reflecting on his desire to challenge himself creatively. Tracks like The Black Seminole set the tone for the album and the production on Drive Me Crazy, is so atmospheric and uh, immersive. The album represented a departure from his hip hop roots and opened a new door to pushing new batteries. As of right now, Yai's on a single run with no signs of slowing down. The songs like Strike, The Secret Recipe featuring J. Cole, and even his most recent single, A Cold Sunday. Although Yai's left his mark as an artist, his influence extends beyond simply. That's the end of the video. You know. What I think about it, Motherfuckers, motherfuckers need to stop criticizing so heavily on the new generation when it comes to their style. Because at the end of the day, it's not like how it used to be back then. Like nowadays, people got different sounds for shit. People, people like listening to different stuff. Don't nobody want to keep hearing the same shit from the '90s or early 2000s because it's it's played out at this point. All this from a nigga named Miles. <laughs> You're fucking wild. Let's read these comments. Bro had no reason to make a nine-minute documentary and cooking. I mean, that shit with Fido. Lil Yachty was getting way too much hate. He still get hate now. Sad boat. Sad boat. Sad boat. This, deserve, this dude deserve at least 100 king. He has 300 y'all are sleeping. This nigga got 500. He deserve it. But um, anyways, that's the end of the video. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. It's your boy OG T-Man signing out. Idiot.